Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Lord Byron, George Gordon Byron, to be more precise. He lived from 1788 to 1824 and is absolutely one of the most well-known English poets um, and a leading figure in the Romantic movement. He wrote a couple of lengthy narrative poems, including Don Juan, uh, which I recommend you look out for if you are interested in that. I think I read a Byron poem back in the first week or so of this show. So the poem that I'm going to read today is called, So We'll Go No More A-Roving. And this is how it goes. So we'll go no more a-roving, so late into the night, though the heart be still as loving and the moon be still as bright, for the sword outwears its sheath, and the soul wears out the breast, and the heart must pause to breathe, and love itself have rest. Though the night was made for loving, and the day returns too soon, yet we'll go no more a-roving by the light of the moon. So this poem is only three stanzas, twelve lines long. Not very long. Good one to memorize, if you can get through those, that first line there. It's a little tough sometimes. But Byron was not even 30 when he wrote this, this poem. And this was a poem that was written during Lent, actually, after a period of what the Norton Anthology calls a period of late night carousing during the carnival season in Venice. And then he wrote a letter to his friend, a friend named Thomas Moore, saying, I find the sword wearing out the scabbard, though I have but just turned the corner of 29. It's a poem about how he's going to stop living the life he'd been living. He was going to calm down a little bit, and he was going to pull a Henry V and end his days of carousing and staying up till all hours and uh, getting into mischief, as William Harmon puts it. (laughs) Byron is recognizing that at a certain point, that sort of life has to stop, and you have to make a turn. You have to move towards maturity, move towards uh, a sense of purpose. For Byron, who died participating in the Greek War of Independence less than a decade later, that sense of purpose, that turning, led him towards politics and cultural issues. And his poetry is informed by that, uh, especially over the course of his 30s before he dies at 36. But in Byron, there's also this sense of, you know, he was considered possibly mad. He had various sordid affairs and relationships and and his poetry seems to be him working out the the pull of his desires and passions and his intellectual recognition that that needs to be something that he avoids that he turns away from he never seems to you know fully repent of the things that he gets involved in so to speak but that his poetry often is in the middle of those two things. It's in the middle of his passion and in the middle of his recognition that something, there's something better for him and that he has some kind of higher calling. And it's interesting that the term Byronic figure is, is so uh, recognized and it's this romantic sort of hero. Um, William Harmon calls it dark, moody, aloof, misanthropic, courageous, brilliant, tortured. You know, these things that we often think of as sort of the classic poet, if you will. And there is something romantic about going off to fight in the cause of freedom, to participate in that and and dying there. So in some ways, you know, had he lived to a ripe old age, maybe that sense of a Byronic figure would not have have lasted. We often think of poets being that way, right? Being sort of dark and aloof and moody and all the things that are sort of customarily go with that reputation. But in Byron, there's that great question, right? In his life and in his work, that's, that's the question. What does it mean to truly be a poet? Do you have to give in to yourself, give in to your passions, or even getting outside of them? Could you still be a great poet? And I often think about that with Byron. If he had escaped, he may have been more healthy, but would we have gotten the poetry we got? And what does that mean, uh, both for Byron and for the history of poetry, for the canon? I don't have answers to those questions. They're just things we're thinking about. It's also just a great poem to think about. as a, I was thinking about it as a New Year's resolution poem. So you can, uh, you, if, you're, uh, if your resolution is to spend uh, less time staying up too late and carousing, then here's a poem for you. Um, either way, we all have something we're trying to, uh, trying to get better at, right? So once more, here is Byron's So We'll Go No More A-Roving. So we'll go no more a-roving so late into the night, though the heart be still as loving and the moon be still as bright. For the sword outwears its sheath, and the soul wears out the breast, and the heart must pause to breathe, and love itself have rest. Though the night was made for loving, and the day returns too soon, it will go no more a-roving by the light of the moon. 
This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks for listening. Be back tomorrow with another one.